All right, we're going to look at Zechariah chapter 1 and chapter 6. Now, during the interesting times that we're seeing with Russia and Ukraine, there are teachers coming out and saying that this is Gog and Magog or that the four horsemen of Revelation, which is the Antichrist, war, famine, death, and hell, that, it's, that the tribulation is being unleashed. Now, if you're a Bible-believing dispensationalist, we know that that's just hogwash. That's Amen. just laughable. Amen. As a matter of fact, the liberal lost world will even laugh at that because there have been many events throughout our past history where people thought it would be the end of the world, where it would be the apocalypse, where people thought this guy was the Antichrist. But it has proven true throughout every historical timeline there were apocalyptic instances. This ain't the first time, guys, you have to realize. There have been apocalypse, apocalyptic instances in the past. If you read the famous passages, and you'll hear this uh, redundant of people using Matthew 24 and Revelation 6 to apply to what you're hearing with Russia and Ukraine. Now, I do not believe that Matthew 24, Revelation 6 applies to today. You might say, why is that? Because when you pay attention and read Matthew 24 and Revelation 6, it's the, the catastrophe is much more dramatic. It's way more catastrophic. What we're seeing is just little portions and tidbits of it. Amen. It's kiddie stuff compared to the big thing. So we believe it's in the future. However, I would like to teach you something very, very interesting. Is that we know as Bible believers... And some of you have heard this stuff before, that the Antichrist may not be here, but that there were many Antichrists before the Antichrist. In other words, there were prototypes of the Antichrist before the big Antichrist came out. Now, thinking that way, you have to think about this way. Could there not be then prototypes of the four horsemen before the actual four horsemen come out? Now, some intelligent Bible believers, they can go as far as to say that they may not be the actual four horsemen, but that they are the ponies of the apocalypse, Amen. or Shetland ponies, so to speak. Amen. And then if you compare throughout history, just study history, you can see some of these four guys in play throughout history, which is interesting. Now, I would also challenge you, see if war famine, some bits of death and hell, and the Antichrist can be seen in your Bible during the Old Testament. During historical timelines throughout the church age, you will see elements of that. So there's no doubt about that. Uh, we see about everything going on with today's pandemic situation and people being scared of this guy, right? And they're thinking that this is the mark of the beast. But we Bible believers know that is not the mark of the beast. Just like the four horsemen are not out now. Okay? But what you are seeing is prototypes of the mark. There is no doubt about that. Undoubtedly prototypes. So there is undoubtedly prototypes going on. Now what I'm going to teach you is this. I'm not sure if this has been taught. But this is what I believe. I believe that the four horsemen that when they are unleashed upon the world at Revelation 6, it has not happened now. It will happen in the future in the tribulation. Right. However, I believe that the four horsemen, mature state of the horses, not an immature or pony state. In my viewpoint, I believe that those grown-up, matured horses have al always been operating even during the church age. Now, I need scripture to prove that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Why, uh, why do I believe that? What I believe, Zechariah 1. <laughs> Let's have some fun. Amen. It seems like my health is gone, I guess. <laughs> uh, my sickness is gone or something. My adrenaline's kicking in, so I guess I'm in concentration mode now. <laughs> Amen. This has been a question, and if you read Dr. Upman's commentary, it's very interesting. Zechariah has been his most, or one of the most difficult books for him to comment. And this one he was bothered by, and he didn't know what it means. He didn't know what it meant. Zechariah 1, verse 8. 
I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse. Hmm. And he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom. And behind him were there red horses, speckled, and white. Okay, so notice right here as Zechariah chapter 1, it's very interesting. The man, that is referring to the angel of the Lord or possibly even Jesus Christ at verse 11. So notice verse 11. The angel of the Lord, so let's put A-O-L over here. The angel of the Lord at Zechariah chapter 1 is the one leading this red horse. But, be, but its horse says plural. Did you notice that? Not one horse. Horse says. Behind this red horse, there were what? White. And then there were also speckled. Whoever speckled is, whatever speckled is, I wonder who speckled could be. So let's put speckled right here. Now go to Zechariah 6. Zechariah chapter 6. Now these horses are mentioned even more. Dr. Ottman's commentary, when he tried to figure out these horses, he says that it's possibly referring to Revelation 6 because you can see the colors matching with these horses. But he doesn't have a finger on what they have to do with the second advent or what uh, the passage is talking about with these horses. Me, I think I have an idea what they are. Let's look at Zechariah chapter 6, verse 2. In the first chariot were what? Red horses. All right, that matches with the sec second horseman of Revelation, right? War. And the second chariot, what? Black horses. That matches with the third horseman of Revelation, famine. All right, so famine, war, antichrist, death. And then the fifth seal is martyrdom, which is no horse. But these four are the horses, okay? Next one. And in the third chariot, white horses. Okay, so we see that first horseman there. And the fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses, whatever that is. So let's put grizzled right here, which we don't know what they are. And then bay, which we don't know what they are. Now, what do I think here? All right. If these horses, the only thing that I can match the clue in the scripture about horses in color that are spiritual beings, the only passage I can think of is Revelation 6. There's no other spiritual clue. So taking the best spiritual clue, all right, I took the best scriptural evidence or the closest to the evidence. And that's how you can build up a more logical scriptural conclusion, right? So that's how we're supposed to do it, unless there's another passage somewhere. But that's the most logical, the best evidence for scripture is Revelation 6 that I can fit with. So then, going by the best evidence, taking into consideration, let's say that these are the four horsemen of Revelation then. How will they match up? Well, speckled, gristled, bay is confusing. Well, let's keep reading. The Bible says uh, in verse 4, Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, uh, These are the four spirits of the heaven, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. So Dr. Upman says in his commentary, which is funny, is that in Zechariah 6, 4, What are these, my Lord? And the angel answered, and Dr. Upman says, no, stop lying. You're not answering the question who those horses are. And Dr. Upman said, just kidding, just kidding. That's just my flesh saying that to the Lord, you know. <laughs> because this don't really answer, but it requires studying to find the answer, right? And Dr. Upman understands that. So look at verse 6. Black horses go to the north country. White go forth after them. Grizzle go forth toward the south country. But look at the bay now at verse 7. The bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth. Now that's more confusing. So then remember at verse 3, fourth chariot is what? 
grizzled and bay. But the Bible's saying grizzled went one way, bay went one way. But why are they considered fourth, right? So then now we have a question about what does this have to do with four now? So let's assume maybe this is talking about the fourth horseman because that's the only clue that we got, right? We already found red, black, white, but the fourth horseman, what did the Bible say in Revelation 6? So then all of these will have to refer to the only missing piece is Revelation 6. So let's look at that fourth horse at Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. And again, let me know if I'm cut off, all right? Revelation chapter 6 and verse 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse. So the Bible called it pale. And his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. Okay, so notice that this guy is called pale. He's not, black, uh, he's not speckled, grizzled, bay, but called pale. So how are we going to find the answers? Why? Simple. You just read the word exactly as it says. And then maybe you might find something. All right? Pale is a fading color, right? All right. You know what grizzled is? It's a faded color. It's grayish. So it's a faded color. All right. So we can see the grizzle horse can match the pale horse. But wait a minute. It gets better. If we assume that these two are referring to like a faded color, couldn't speckled match up with faded color as well? You just read the word exactly as it says, and then, you know what I found out? I was like, wait a minute, there's got to be then a horse that might be speckled, that might be grayish, and there are. It's called a dappled gray horse, or Appaloosa, they might say. And you know what it looks like? I don't, I don't think onlineers can see this or you guys, but I'll, I don't know if it's big enough for you guys to see it. Yeah, I don't think so, but this is what it looks like. So it's speckled, and it's pale, and it's uh, grizzled or grayish. It fits it, but it makes sense when I compare Scripture with Scripture. When the... Four, when there were three or four eyewitnesses of Jesus' crucifixion, they didn't say one in the same word. They gave different accounts of the same sign that Jesus Christ died on, right? Remember the sign, this is Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. But if you look at all four accounts of the gospel, they all write it differently. So then the atheists, they'll say that, well, you know, you notice right here the Bible contradicted itself. No, it's Four eyewitnesses who saw the same sign, but they're giving their own different take of what they read the sign. So they saw, if you look at accounts, this is proven in every court, court of law. In court of law, when you have witnesses, let's say you have four eyewitnesses, they're not going to share the exact same story. But they will tell you about the same incident but in four different perspectives of that same incident. So like, for example, one guy might say about a person who was burning in the car, you might get one witness who said, I saw the guy burning in the car. The second witness might say, I saw the guy jump out of the car. The third guy saying, I saw the guy stuck in the car. And then the fourth guy might say, you know, I saw the guy who's, uh, got, who was on fire got the water and was doused out the fire. Is there a contradiction? No, how do you not know that the guy was stuck in the car for a while and then he got, uh, that's why he caught on fire and then they put the water to douse the fire. Basically, all of them are seeing partial events of the same instance. Now, if you take it that way, Zachariah and John are what? Different eyewitnesses and authors of the vision God has given of the fourth horseman, and Zechariah is saying, well, I see it speckled. And then John's saying, I see it as, as uh, pale. Ah, Amen. 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 
How about that, right? Man, then that would make sense. But now we got a question about the bay horse, right? As Zechariah chapter 6. Who is this bay horse and why is he conglomerated with the fourth chariot? You just need to read every word. When you go to Revelation 6, go back to Revelation 6. Death was the horseman, but he wasn't the only one going. Hell followed with him. Zechariah 6 showed you in this fourth chariot, grizzled and what? You know what color the bay horse is? Dr. Upman's commentary mentioned this, red. Hell is a place of fire. Yeah. Now, Dr. Upman mentioned that the bay horse could be referring to this red horse, but the problem is this. The problem is, is that Zechariah 6 separated them. Zechariah 6 said uh, the first chariot is red, and then the fourth is bay and grizzled. See? Yeah. Yeah. So then that bay horse has to be separated from the red horse then it made sense, hell. Because hell followed with him, death. They go hand in hand together. Why do you think the Bible says, and death and hell was cast into the lake of fire? Revelation chapter 20. Yeah. Why do you think the Bible says, uh, uh, the Bible always associates death and hell together? You notice that throughout your Bible? The Bible associates death and hell so much that the Bible says that uh, hell is what? The second death. Man, that's something. Then this solved the issue. All right. Now, what does this have to do with four horsemen going around right now in Zechariah, right? So go to Zechariah 1. Zechariah 1. It's a good time to close in prayer and close Bible study now, right? I always like to do that. <laughs> All right, Zechariah chapter 1. Of course not. Let's keep going, right? Some of, the, some of the people watching are like, no, don't end it now, you know. All right, so Zechariah chapter 1. Now, look at the wording here. The Bible says uh, at verse 8, which we read, right? The red speckle and white. Verse 9, uh, then said I, O oh my Lord, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And Dr. Upman says, no, you don't. Stop lying, you liar, you know. But obviously, he's speaking from the flesh, he says. So he knows that the Lord has an answer. And this is the answer. So that's why you have to study and pay attention. Yeah. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. Okay, do you see that right there? Yeah. That's the clue. Horses that walk to and fro through the earth. Understanding that's what it means. Then uh, what's the next part? Well, they walked to and fro through the earth. And then verse 11, And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro through the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. Now, did you notice that right there? So when these four horsemen, or not four horsemen, but these horses were going around, there's something interesting here. This is not the tribulation then. You might say, why? Because it says the earth sitteth still and is at rest. It's not in chaos. It's in a peaceful state. Okay, what's the context? What's going on here? The Bible will show you. At verse 12, Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation these Three score and ten years. Look at verse 15. Uh, and I am very sore displeased with the who? Heathen. Heathen that are at what? Ease. That's what verse 11 is referring to. The, the Gentiles around the world. They're at ease. They're at stillness. For I, uh, verse 15. For I was but a little displeased and they helped forward the affliction. What is it? The Gentile nations afflicting the nation of Israel. Okay, 
if these Gentile nations were afflicting the nation of Israel, what's going on during that time the Gentiles are afflicting the Jews? Walking to and fro the horses. Correct. All right, is that what we follow in context? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. Then you know what that means right there? Think about it. This obviously occurred during the first centuries, right? We know that. Israel was under affliction from the Gentile nations. But guess what? Is Israel done with their affliction? No, the Gentile nations, I, Israel has suffered the affliction from God for all this time until Daniel's 70th week comes. Romans 11 already told you Israel is temporarily cast aside because it's under God's judgment. So Israel's still undergoing that. So... If Israel has been undergoing that through the Gentile age or times of the Gentiles and the church age is in the times of the Gentiles, that means these horsemen were walking to and fro. Do we follow so far? All right, now we have to look at the scripture. What happens when you have some spirit that walks to and fro? Because these are no doubt spirits. Go to the book of, uh, I think it's Ezekiel. All right, let's see right here. Ezekiel. Let's see if this is the right one. All right. Let's see right here. Uh, and make sure if I got the right verse here. Okay. No, 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 no. I didn't write this verse down. Let's see. Uh, so it's Isaiah 31. Isaiah 31. All right, excuse me. Isaiah 31. Isaiah 31. And then I want you to go to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. Isaiah 31. And then uh, Ezekiel. Uh, and then first, uh, let's see, Isaiah 31 and 2 Kings chapter 2. All right, now remember the Lord Jesus Christ was writing it, right? Or if it's not the Lord Jesus Christ, at least angel of the Lord will call it, right? But a lot of people believe the angel of the Lord is the pre-incarnate of Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to get into that. I just want to play as safe as possible if I'm going to prove something from the scriptures. If God is in control of these horses, you have to keep in mind this. Then does God have spirit horses that have always been operating? Yes, they've always been operating. That includes what? These horsemen. Why? Because these horsemen belong to God, the Bible says. So you know what that means? That means these spirit horses have always been spiritually, actively operating. But let's prove it with Scripture if there are spirit horses that, are cur that have always been operating actively. Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 2. All right, now let's start off right here. The Bible says, uh, come on, my fingers are so slippery right here. In verse 11, and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and part of them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Notice God has spirit horses that were actively operating. Isaiah 31, look at the wording right here. Isaiah 31, verse 3. Isaiah 31, and then look at verse 3. The Bible says right here, Now the Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses flesh and not what? Spirit. Spirit. Whoa. Whoa. It's pointing out, are there spirit horses? Well, 2 Kings 2 pointed out there is. But let's look at the book of 2 Kings again. And we're going to look at chapter 6. Chapter 6. Red horse says, plural. Black horse says, plural. Not just singular four horsemen. You know why? God has a whole bunch of spirit horses up in heaven. All right, look at 2 Kings chapter 6. Bigger than the horses of today. He has a lot of them. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. 
What were those? Those were spirit horses, heavenly horses up in heaven. Wow. What did Zechariah 1 and Zechariah 6 says? These horses were what? Standing before the Lord. All right then. So then, if these horses are standing, look, you, if these horses are standing before the Lord, and the Lord can conjure up these horses, here's another interesting thing to note about. Who is the being that has, who can stand before the Lord up in heaven, but can become that evil spirit to fulfill God's bidding and purpose, and he walks to and fro in the earth? Satan. Why won't his demoniac beings be able to do the same? Zechariah 1 and 6 says what? They stand before the Lord. They walk to and fro in the earth. But let's use scripture. All right. You don't have to believe me. Let's look at scripture. All right. All right. Let's start off with 1 Peter chapter 5. Who walks to and fro? Who walks to and fro? Uh, well, let's not 1 Peter 5. Job 1. Let's do Job 1. Let's go to Job 1. All right. Who walks to and fro? Satan. Job 1. Job 1. Verse 7, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. And where is he? He's standing before the Lord at verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. But I'll show you an even better one. Go to 2 Kings. Uh, 1 Kings, go to 1 Kings. I'll show you a better one than that. Go to 1 Kings. 1 Kings, chapter 20. Let's see right here. Fingers are so slippery right here. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. Look at this right here. The Bible shows, some of you are, has, this is why I don't like Bible believers. They already know the answer because they read the passage. All right. <laughs> no, it's a good thing. Amen? Amen. It's a good thing that people would know. 1 Kings chapter 22. And then look at verse 20. Uh, no, verse 19. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. Uh, remember Zechariah 6, Zechariah 1? These horses were standing. They stand before the Lord, right? And they're what? Spirits, right? As Zechariah 1 and 6, they're spirits that stand before the Lord, spirit horses. Notice right here, verse 20, uh, verse 20, 21. These are spirits that stand before the Lord. Yeah. All right, 21. And there came forth the spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. This ain't a good spirit. Verse 22, and the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So what does that mean? That means the reason why God can have charge of these spirit horses or spirits, even though they're bad, is because, remember, Satan can't do anything without God's permission. At Job chapter 1, when Satan wants to do his thing, he has to make sure when he walks to and fro and these evil spirits walk to and fro, they got to make sure they go by God's permission. Amen. That's right. And then God says, okay, I want you to do what? Look at the simple names right here. It's called death, famine, war, and antichrist. Now use your head now. Are you telling me for the past 6,000 years there was not a single war, not a single famine, not a single death that spirits used to fulfill God's purpose? They were sure operating. That's why I believe these are full-grown horses that have always been operating. The Bible says there are many antichrists before the antichrist. There have always been war, famine, death. Yeah. So you know what's going on? That's what's going on with Russia, Ukraine. All these glimpses, what you're seeing of death with the pandemic situation and then prototypes of the mark of the beast and then uh, 
the war and then famine and then some people claiming to be Christ or Antichrist, all of these prototypes to the real thing at tribulation. But you know what I believe they are? What I believe they are are bits and pieces of these horsemen operating actively right now. Yeah. But here's the thing right here. Here's another thought to think about. Do you think that these four horsemen for the past 6,000 years, they're just going to sit around and do nothing? They're not just going to sit still do nothing all day long. They have to fulfill God's bidding and purpose. All right. So then, we're not seeing these four horsemen unleashed from the seal. That's the key. In Revelation 6, what did the Bible say? I saw the first seal loosed, second seal loosed, third, fourth seal loosed. What does that mean? When the seal is broken and loosed. These horses run in full power mode, okay? But in the meantime, these four horses are not going full power mode. Why? Because if, you, if they went full power mode on famine, this ain't enough. But there have been bits and pieces of famine throughout history. Why? Because that horseman has been doing bits and pieces under God's permission. Because why? God has to break the seal. You know what Revelation 6 says, Revelation 5? God has to break the seal. Yeah. Amen. Good teaching. So underneath God's permission, they have limited power. Today and all the way back to Job, to the beginning, they've been doing that. Right. Death, famine, antichrist war, etc. They've been doing that. So that's what they've been doing all this time. All right? But until God breaks the seal, then all that power is unleashed. Then it's not just a little Antichrist anymore. It's the Antichrist. The Bible says at 1 John that there are many Antichrists yeah. before the Antichrist comes out. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 talks about mystery of iniquity. Antichrist already worked, but the son of perdition is not fully revealed. Yeah. See that? There's no doubt. So yes, I believe there are prototypes, but it's more than that. I believe it's more through the scriptures that they are operating, but only limited amounts because under God's permission. He didn't unleash the seal yet. Yeah. Isn't that? <laughs> isn't that? Whoa, right? Yeah. So, so this would make a lot, a lot of sense to me on when I compare the scriptures. But the scripture already gave you a clue. Zechariah 1 said what? Walking what? To and fro, right? You know what that means? Walking to and fro is you're not doing your real action yet. You're preparing for something. Satan, he didn't unleash on Job yet. Why? He wants God to give me permission to break the seal, so to speak, and unleash my wrath on Job. And God's like, no, no, no. Uh, God gave him some access, right? But see why? Satan was walking to and fro like, Fine. Like today, he's walking to and fro. What's your weak spot I can attack? What's your weak spot I can attack? And he's walking to and fro, and he's saying, God, give me permission. Give me permission to do it. That's what these horses are doing, walking to and fro, famine, war, antichrist, and saying, God, break the seal. God, break the seal. So what are they doing? They have not unleashed their full action, that means. What that means is they're amping up their full action. You know what you're seeing with all these prototypes now? It's amping up the action. That's what walking to and fro is. That's uh, 1 Peter 5, what it says. The, the devil as a roaring lion walketh about. Like Job 1, right? Walking to and fro. Why? Why is he walking? Because that's not attack mode yet. It's amping up for what? 1 Peter 5 says, seeking whom he may devour. That's his action. Walking to and fro is I'm seeking, I'm searching, I'm amping up before I do my big full action. 1 Peter 5, right? All right, can someone, uh, I think people might go, 5 8, right? So 1 Peter 5 8, all right? So I just want to say that. That's 1 Peter 5 8, if you look at that one. Yep, yep, it is. 1 Peter 5 8, all right? Just read that. Well, just read every single word. People don't read every single word. If you just read the word and take time, 
and then compare that with the full context with Scripture is Scripture. Like I taught you guys in, uh, the, on the training classes, right? It goes, whoa. Now, man, ain't that book cool? That book is something else, man. Boy, man. That book is something yeah. else. All right. Now that we understand that, let's go to Luke 21, all right? Luke 21. And then I want you to go to Zechariah again, uh, 1 and 6. Zechariah 1 and 6. All right. Now, I say all this, I didn't even go through Russia and Ukraine yet and all the uh, prototypes, so to speak, or precursors to the real thing, but I'll do that as fast as I can. But I had to explain every verse by verse thing so that you can understand where I'm driving at, okay? This is why, yeah, I believe that the four horsemen, they are actively working right now. But they're only do it, doing it in limited amounts. They have not been unsealed yet. They have not been unleashed in their full potential, full potential, their full power. Now, here's one thing that uh, uh, I want to look at when we look at Zechariah 1, 6, and Luke 21. Now, before I read this, look at all this thing amping up, okay? In Zechariah chapter 1, isn't it interesting? The Bible says, what's the first attention at verse 8? I saw by night, and behold, a man riding upon a what? Red horse. It's not white. You notice that? Notice in verse, the latter part of verse 8, behind, behind him were there red horses speckled and white. Behind this specific red horse, then the speckled right here, assuming that's death, and then the white, assuming that's those uh, junior antichrists, so to speak, that those are secondary. It seems like the primary thing they're waiting for is war. That's weird, isn't it? Basically, these horses are following along. Their operations have to follow along behind war. Look at Zechariah 6. Isn't it interesting again? Zechariah 6. Zechariah 6, verse 2. In the first chariot were white horses? No, right? Red, second chariot, black, third, white, fourth, gristled and bay horses. Why, why, why is the order that? Why is red first? Let me show you an interesting one, Luke 21. Luke 21. Even Luke 21 says this, which is talking about the official tribulation that starts. Verse 9, but when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, right? That's the red horseman, right, at the tribulation? For these things must what? First come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Now, why is it that the red horse is a primary figure? Then it made sense to me. Dr. Upman is such a genius. Like, people will call him a prophet. And you know what prophets did at the Old Testament, right? They'll say something, but they didn't fully understand what it meant, right? When I read Dr. Upman's Zechariah commentary, it's just phenomenal. The guy was a prophet. He's like, he mentioned that this, what this has to do with uh, the red horse operating in the church age, I don't know, you know. Now I know. You know why? I'm in it. You know what gets these guys operating? The famine the death and hell, and eventually the Antichrist for the church age, you need what? War. When you have a big catastrophe like war, these other three horsemen can naturally follow and operate. You know what's very puzzling to me is this, is that when I compare these four horsemen, the last prototype that's coming out is Antichrist for a one world leader because they're still in a democratic mindset. Okay, divided mindset. But you can see that because of war, coronavirus, and a lot of things, that it's going to eventually lead a more unified form, right? And then eventually a one world leader, right? But it, you can notice these steps take time for a world leader. But in order to build up that world leader, you need that war thing. You know why? There are too many reports right now about people building their own new world order system because of wars. Famine, 
Economic trouble is coming. Why? Because of war, Russia-Ukraine conflict, oil, food, etc. China getting involved, dollar suffering, etc. And then what? Then you can get death and hell. We got that coronavirus thing that happened, but guess what? That's a little kitty stuff. And then you see the program postponed, and it's like as if they're waiting for something else to happen. Yeah so that they can unleash the next wave yeah. of something, maybe. But you, this guy is very important. You see, that's the point. The point is, this guy, war is important. By the way, if you study the occultist and globalist elites, it's common sense, and they can agree with me on this one. You know what they said? In order to bring their antichrist, their new world order system, their paradise, their kingdom, they need what? They need war first. They need destruction first. They need chaos first. Right. Study the history of World War II and World War I. How, how did people end up in prosperity their age? They first needed war. Then, then they recover. Then there's a prosperous age. And then stupid consumers, they just, uh, low, uh, they just make an economic downfall. And then they pick themselves back up again. But then war always reconstructs That's something. Right. Just study every historical timeline. That's good. That's good. Yes, I believe there's something going on with prototypes of four horsemen. But I don't think it's uh, like what you call prototypes. I think it's just limited uh, operations yeah. of what the four horsemen are doing. Mm -hmm. To amp up and build what? Where Jesus Christ is about... Because when he unleashes the seal, it's a full, powerful, blown wrath that's coming up. Yeah. So notice that it's amping up. See that? These blue lines? It's yeah. amping up. Wow. A seal, when a seal breaks, that means that book is opened and then everything's unleashed, so to speak. Yeah. So it has to build up more. Amen. So each seal from each horseman, they have to amp it up more. And that even includes the fifth seal, that means. Which is what? If you read the fifth seal at Revelation chapter 6, that's when those martyrs get beheaded for not taking the mark of the beast. Hence, that's why you see little glimpses of persecution building up, little glimpses of mark of the beast building up. This makes a lot more sense then if you take it that way. Why? Because the demonic spirits, when they're doing their work, they are preparing for that tribulation. So they have to actively work right now. Each evil spirit behind the scenes has to build up something. That's why I really believe that. It makes a lot of sense. Okay, so then look at these reports. Now I'm going to give the evidences. It's just way too many, which is extremely crazy. From the New York Post, Russia sanctions 13 Americans, including Joe and Hunter Biden, Hillary Clinton. So notice that Russia sanctioned back now. And America. Here's another one. Russia asked uh, from the New York Times. So that was the New York Post, and that was the title that I read. Here's another one. The New York Times now. Title of the article, Russia asked China for military and economic aid for Ukraine war, U.S. officials say. Now China's getting back there. We already had some problems and some concerns about coronavirus and things going on, right? Now, China's getting back into play. This is bad. If Russia asked for such aid, what did, how would U.S. respond to this? Well, U.S., they're definitely not happy about this. So then what does this say right here about Financial Times? Financial Times, title of the article, China warns, so then the... the NATO and United States, obviously, they were afraid of that. They said, look, don't, don't help out the Russians here. You know how China responded back? Title of the article from Financial Times, China warns of retaliation if hit by Russia sanctions fallout. And you know, because of that, I wonder what China will do. You think they're going to sit quiet because they're... Uh, people uh, that they were friendly with with Russia, the, pe uh, the country that they were one of one of the countries they were closest to to do dealings. If Russia could does it, don't you think China will do something too? Wh what about Taiwan, right? From Politico, title of the article from Politico: Will Taiwan? 
be the next Ukraine. For Beijing, Russia's difficult war offers a cautionary tale. Wow, how about that, huh? Things are building up. Didn't you know that? Things are building up. And then people are going, what is going on? Is this the end of the world? That's why there are so many prophecy scholars who incorrectly teach that uh, the four horsemen on un are unleashed because you see so many strong glimpses of four horsemen coming out. But obviously this ain't full-blown potential yet. But you are seeing, no doubt, glimpses of it building out. There's no doubt about that. What will Ukraine do with NATO membership, right? Because Ukraine wants to go in with NATO, but Russia, if you recall from the reports, they don't want that. So what happened at the end was, this is from France 24 News. Title of the article is, In nod to Russia, Ukraine says no longer insisting on NATO membership. But because of that, if NATO gets involved, you know what that means? That means World War III, guys. That means World War III, and that would be bad. Wow. So then what does Zelensky warn? From the article, The Times of Israel, Zelensky warns NATO will be, attacks, will be attacked next. Zelensky warns NATO will be attacked next as Russian offensive aims westward. This is getting really bad, guys. Here's another one. You know how close that they are? Pretty close because the title of this article points out. Let's see right here. Let me pull it out. This is from Miami Standard. From Miami Standard. Title of the article is World War III. Biden sending thousands of Marines to Australia in, in anticipation of conflict with China. Yep. Everyone's getting involved. Here's another one from NPR News. NPR News. Russian strikes on Ukraine hit near the border of Poland, yep. a NATO member state. There's another uh, article that says, uh, that words it as the doorstep of NATO. Russian airstrike or Russian bombs are going off. This is getting really, really amped up. In fact, if we believe that's going to get that amped up, don't forget what, which nation is the most important nation for the tribulation in the Bible that God's attention is on, that all the Gentile nations will have the attention on. It's Israel. It's Israel. So understanding that it's Israel, look back at Zechariah 6. In Zechariah 6, they went to the north country, the south country. Dr. Ruckman's commentary says that's referring to the part, the surrounding regions is going by the main nation, Israel. If you look at Zechariah 1, who's the main attention in Zechariah 1 for the horses? The angel of the Lord says about who? Israel, Jerusalem. So Israel has to play a part in this. If these four horsemen are amping up, then Israel's going to have to play somehow. Yes. Here are some shocking articles. Times of Israel, title of their article. Zelensky, all right, that's Ukrainian side, suggests... Jerusalem to what? Host negotiations between Russia, Ukraine and Russia. Jerusalem for a peace treaty? Where tribulation, you need what? The Antichrist to start a what? Peace treaty. Are, are we? Are we? Is this world? I'm, you, I'm just babbling now. I don't know what to say. Like, if you don't believe that book after that, especially when we've been preaching about this for what, 50 years, 100 years, you're nuts, man. Man, it's your fault dying and burning in hell as an unbeliever, okay? That's all I'll say, okay? I mean, just looking at this, you can't believe it. I mean, Israel is no doubt a main player in attention because the title of the article from the Jerusalem Post reads, U.S. in hourly contact 
with Israelis on Russia-Ukraine war, Envoy says. They're checking up with them every hour. Israel has a big play on this one. In fact, it's such a big play that now, don't forget, if you recall my Revelation 6 teaching, I taught you that the red horse can refer to communist, but also what? I mentioned about communist, which can be China, Russia, and then another system. It's what? Islam, remember? Do you think there might be some Muslim nations involved when this war comes out? Title of the article from Newsweek, Iran threats Russia-Ukraine conflict eyed in Israel's massive cyber attack. People were concerned about, you know, the Russian hackers and etc. But now it's reaching to a point where Israel is involved. Here's another one from the title of the article from the Jerusalem Post. The invasion of Ukraine and Iran's missile attacks are geopolitical omens. Analysis. How about that? Didn't you know that happened? No, you, you didn't know about that. You know why? Because it's fulfilling something in Scripture. Did you pay attention at Luke 21? But let's go to Matthew 24 too. This is interesting, right? The main attention is what? War, right? War is the main attention. If you're going to get any news or reports or updates, the Bible says for one thing, from one horseman, from one horseman, it's war. Look at Matthew 24 and Luke 21. Let's look at Luke 21, verse 9, verse 9. But when ye shall hear of wars and what? Commotions. For these things must first, right? That's the main attention right here. So there's, notice, commotions, reports spreading about war, 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 war. Go to Matthew 24. Didn't the Bible say that? Matthew 24, verse 6, repeating that. And ye shall hear of what? Wars and what? Rumors of wars. It doesn't just say war. It says commotions. It says rumors of war. Why is that important? Because that's what you're seeing right now with those four horsemen where it's all commotion and reports of war, 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 war. And then you didn't know all this other stuff was going on. So then the Antichrist, mystery of iniquity he's called, right? He can mysteriously just slip in. You can get that mark of the beast, all this other stuff, slip in. If you get all their attention on war. And guess what? That's exactly what's going on right now. There are so many reports that you haven't heard. Like, didn't you know that uh, one example is this for some of you who didn't know. Now, before I continue this on, I want to mention one thing which is very, very important is that when I reveal some of these reports and documents, it's important to understand that the U Ukrainian people are not at fault. There's a lot of this commotion and rumor of war that's trying to make Russia the good guy and then put all the blame on NATO and Ukraine. That, that's the devil's purpose with this, what, prototype or, you know, the red horsemen just sneakily coming out with glimpses where rumors and commotions does not just include mainstream news, but the internet. And the devil's trying to cause this confusion with people, with this war thing going on. And guess what? There are people getting deceived. You can't think of it that way. To think that Putin is a good guy, I, I think you need to, I think you need to just take a minute and then pray to the Lord, okay? You know, but there's no doubt that there's some elitist, globalist agenda going on within the NATO side and things going on with Ukrainian government and American government. All right? Then what's the simple answer? The simple answer is this. You cannot put the blame on the Ukrainian people or the Russian people. It's what the Bible said. It's the governments that are the evildoers. Do you understand that? Governments have always fought for power for each other, and then the people, unfortunately, get dictated by their own government systems on what they teach or propaganda they put in their heads to support their country and their nation in their own, the government leader's agenda. Now, is that scripture? Yes. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 
that the ones who are also in line with demonic spirits are what? Principalities. Those are referring to what? The government system and its leaders. All right? The elitists are the evil people. It's, it's not referring to the people. You got to be careful of that because there are, all right? I know you're trying to get onto this biolab thing, and there is some truth that I'm going to show you, but you can't just think that uh, Russia is only aiming for biolabs. Look, ha, uh, you don't read the missionaries who are in Ukraine, okay? I read the reports. Ukrainian people are dying, all right? Bombs are going off in hospitals and other places. You can't say that when you haven't been to Ukraine yourself, all right? Don't just go off by some information you find online. You know what that is? Rumors, commotions of war. Like Jesus prophesied would happen. That's where your attention's on. It's all this war stuff. It's all this war stuff. And the devil can seep his lie underneath behind the scene. You got to watch out for that. So all of it is lies, including our government. Yes, including our government, including NATO. Uh, government leaders are messed up. You know that biolab thing? This is uh, messed up. Remember about the neo-Nazis and then uh, the alt-right, the far-right extremists, etc.? This is so true because I've already given you some reports proving that from Time Magazine and even the New York Times. But uh, there's a video which will sum it up more beautifully. It's from Mark Dice's video channel. And Mark Dice has a title called Big Update About Ukraine and Russia. Now, I'm not saying that this guy, I trust the guy with my, uh, you know, I trust him as far as my left foot is concerned, okay? Some people say he's a plant CIA agent. I don't know. But, I, but he pulls up the documents. So just look up the documents, and then he sums it up easier for me. He points out Amazon, mainstream news, of so many reports of, I think it's the Asimov Battalion, I think that's how you pronounce their name, of their neo-Nazi symbol and so many reports on it. And he also points out how Facebook would even allow them to post their material. But wait a minute, I thought Trump was the, what, far-right neo-Nazi thing? What in the, see this? Unless it supports your government's agenda, then they allow the post. See, that's why I don't trust this corrupt system. Totally messed up. It's totally messed up. So yeah, the, the, when uh, Obama, when one of the persons who worked for Obama said at MSNBC, there are no Nazis and in Ukraine, they, he overlooked about Ukrainian soldiers who were training for years before this Russia-Ukraine conflict happened. All right, Th there were battalions working to get training exercises, neo-Nazis. But here's another one: is uh, exclusive biological weapons expert exposes labs in Ukraine and China run by U.S. government. And this is uh, because there's no mainstream news source that would post this. You have to look at InfoWars who posted it because InfoWars did the interview with this guy. This is the guy that's the source, Dr. Francis Boyle. He was important for some of you who didn't know about many, uh, many laws and acts in our government for the virus or for disease or etc. So he's a biological expert, basically biological expertise, this guy. So they were interviewing him and he leaned toward that. He leaned toward that. Another one, this is uh, mainstream, you don't post this. So this one, you have to take it with a grain of salt, okay? I'm not saying that you can believe this 100%, but they did pull up documents and put the links, which makes it fishy and it's worth at least it's worth researching, okay? If you believe easily what mainstream news says, but then there are hints of suspicion, and then you just ignoramiously, just igno ignorantly, like an ignoramus going like, oh no, uh, those suspicions, they're not true. No, if there's a sp suspicion that comes out, it's your job to research and to have critical thinking. You got rid of critical thinking. You just believe whatever people say to you. You have to have critical thinking. And if there's something that shows something suspicious, you got to dig into that. So Gateway Pundit did, uh, posted an article which is extremely interesting, and I looked at some of their links. Breaking exclusive. Hunter Biden firm Rosemont Seneca, that's the name of one of their com companies, Rosemont Seneca, invested in firm tied to Ukrainian biolabs. 
By the way, it goes as so far where Obama was even involved. This is from the Washington Post, liberal news source. Yeah. And this was years ago, yeah, yeah. 2005 of August 30th. Yeah. U.S. to aid Ukraine in countering bioweapons. How about that? The agreement, the result of more than a year of negotiations, was announced by Senators Richard G. Lugar and Barack Obama during a visit to the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. Okay. Here's another one. C-SPAN. Look at C-SPAN. Title of their article in March 8, 2022. Senator Rubio questions Under Secretary Newland over biolabs in Ukraine. You know what she replied? Ukraine has biological research facilities, which in fact we are now quite concerned Russian forces may be seeking to gain control of. Okay, so then there are, there are this U.S. funded stuff. Like you could believe them what they said about two years ago, right? With certain labs going on that were being gain of function research with uh, the disease spreading. Like you can believe whatever they say nowadays. You can trust the labs as far as your left foot is concerned, man. Here's the one from The Guardian. So The Guardian, which is a liberal news source, it takes all of it together. Title of the article, What are Russia's Biological Weapons Claims and What's Actually Happening? So from my understanding of it is, yes, there are, all right? But they'll mention the Russia prop, uh, propaganda where they will claim that U.S. is creating some kind of biological warfare. But it's more for research purposes. I think that's what it comes down to at the end. But here's the point. My point is, is that Russia propaganda... American government, NATO, what they say, both of them, what do you think they're going to be doing? They're all going to find dirt on each other and trash talk. So that's why I can't trust any of them, what they say. That's the bottom line. But there is something both of them agree. There is bio labs going on. With all of this in mind, wow, so much just misinformation, confusion. It's like... What's true and what's false? Well, there's one thing going on is these glimpses are happening, and I've given you some reports of glimpses happening, but let me give you some more. Here's another one from the Haaretz. Let's look at the elitists, the globalists. Now, the Antichrist, he comes from the nation of Israel, which uh, you've heard from my previous teachings, all right? So then, will there be some globalist elitists involved? Well, title of the article from Haaretz, U.S. growing alarmed over Israel's safe harbor for Russian oligarchs, <laughs> or some reports will call it Russia's elitists. They're all going to Israel. That's why Israel is in a not good place, and then USA is keeping hourly contact with them, trying to find out what's going on. Here's another one. Harvard International Review. Title of the article is Beijing Creating a New... Sino-Russian world order. The Russian invasion of Ukraine might change Beijing's calculus for Taiwan and the United States. There's no doubt a new world order is forming from all of this. Another one. Some of you have already heard this news from PBS News. Glimpses of it building up of these horsemen. Title of PBS News Hour: Russian forces seize Europe's Europe's Largest nuclear plant as the death toll rises in Ukraine. Now Russia got a hand of that. Now we're like wondering, oh boy. <laughs> Here's something very interesting. Now this article connects a lot of the globalists together. And you take it with a grain of salt like I say again. But research all these people and it's interesting. He even puts all the documents in there. From InfoWars, title of the article, How Are Hunter Biden, Klaus Schwab, and CIA Connected to U.S. Biolabs in Ukraine? And he has part one, part two. And what he does is that Hunter Biden with his, um, I think the name of uh, one of the places, uh, I mentioned one of the names, but the other one was called 
Meta something. I forgot what it is. But anyways, uh, Meta Biota, Meta Biota, all right? So that was connected with Hunter Biden. And then when you connect that, it's so weird. Then it connects with Bill Gates, who he funded certain uh, organizations. And then you'll see certain of those organizations that put in Fauci's thesis and arguments. And then you'll see Klaus Schwab in there. It was all tied. And I was like, whoa, it's like one big pot. So you can research yourself. And like I said, I'm not claiming this as fact. So, but I believe that you have to research yourself to find the truth. So then if you look it up yourself, then you can see how much is true, how much is false. But let's see what they're uh, hiding behind the scenes. Remember, rumors of war, right? Commotions, getting you distracted from all these other precursors coming out, right? So did you know about these news? Let's look at a couple of them. Title of the article from uh, New York Times, China's COVID lockdowns set to disrupt global supply chains. So China is now getting more involved in this. And people are worried about the economy. I mean, everyone's looking at the gas prices, and not just that, food and other things to buy. But remember, I gave you the report from China that they will retaliate, they said. So this is, uh, this is getting bad stuff. Here's another one that you didn't hear about. From CBS News, title of the article, Pfizer CEO says fourth dose of Let's call it Fauci fungus. You remember what that is? All right. Fauci fungus. All right. Fourth dose of Fauci fungus is necessary. Submits data to FDA. So now they're putting the data to FDA and they want to push a fourth yeah. one now yeah. on you. Yeah. And, and Fauci, guess what? He says, we're not done yet. If you think we're going back to normal and this is done, we're not done yet. Title of the article from CNBC. Two years into the coronavirus pandemic, Fauci hopes the world will not forget lessons from a catastrophic experience. That's the title of the article. And he says right here, it is likely that we're not done with this when it comes to, he says we're not done. He's going to continue it on, guys. And some of them, uh, he, here are some of the things you didn't hear about, though. Didn't you know that there are do Pfizer documents that were being released while this commotion of war was going on? You didn't know that, did you? Why? Because everyone's attention is obviously on this, right? On the Fauci fungus. What a, best, what a good way to distract them from that, where people who are corrupt behind the scenes don't get caught if you put their attention on war. This, is a, this guy didn't get a single strike because he's giving every medical empirical uh, statement. And he goes by a fairly. His name is Dr. John Campbell. 2.28 uh, million subscribers and everything he covers was throughout that pandemic situation. He covered everything, medical documents, everything. So he never got a strike for that because he's giving actual factual cases. And it seemed like he was more sympathetic toward the pro-Fauci fungus side. It was, there are some things he was lenient toward. But then when the Pfizer document got out, and the title of this video is called The Pfizer Documents, he started, when he looked at the adverse effects, he said that, you know, how the wordplay in court is with research, risk and reward. I don't know if you learned of that before, but in PhD research, they allow certain things to be, you can research and use and medical practices or biological th things that you can use on the community and public, depending on how much the reward is compared to the risk. So then the terms are going to be different on what you think is risk. So adverse risk or effects may not be as risky compared to the rewards. That's how, the, that's how they'll see it. But when you read that document, to you, some of you people, you might think the risk is bad. And this guy actually said when he looked at the risk, he didn't like it. You just watch that video. He'll go, he pulls up the Pfizer documents. And uh, because uh, I believe, I could be wrong, a Texas court judge wanted that out. So then while they were getting distracted with all this, here, you are, here they are where there's things that they don't want you to see, those papers, now is being hid with all this commotion. 
Just watch that video, and then let's see what your conclusion is after that. You know, that might happen. But here's another one. This is by MedPage Today. Title of the article from MedPage Today. This is so interesting. The title is, is uh, Fauci Fungus Researcher, all right? Fauci Fungus Researcher. Let me see right here. Come on. Uh, it's not, it's not going to, okay. Who developed, is it uh, tinnitus? Tinnitus or is it? tinnitus? Thank you. I don't know medical terms. Tinnitus after COVID Fauci fungus calls for further study. So this guy was a supporter and a researcher for the Fauci fungus, but then he developed tinnitus after that, and then he said also that he got a lot of emails from other people. Read that article. He got a lot of emails from other people who said they developed it too, and he said it's very sad. This is the guy who helped research and promoted it. Uh, but when's the last time? You didn't hear that, right? Did you hear that plastered on CNN? No, it's all this, this, this. Rumors, commotions where you least expect it and you don't see it. And here's, a scare, uh, here's another one from Fox News. Title of the article, Rand Paul introduces amendment to eliminate Fauci's position as NIAID director. So they want to do that, but your attention's on war, 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 so that some guys can get away with some dirt, right, maybe? I say maybe, okay? I say maybe, okay? That way you don't have to accuse me for false information or something. By the way, here's from UK Research and Innovation website. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Well, whoop de doo didn't you know that they gave, uh, they were funding, let's see right here, 2,325,409 pounds at March 13th to March 18th to the guy who promoted research about the lockdowns, the first guy who did that, Neil Ferguson. Or you didn't hear that name so often. Oh, no, you're all like, but Bill Gates funded him. Right. It's from their website. Title of the article also is MRC Center for Outbreak Analysis and Modeling Renewal. But you have to go to UK Research and Innovation website, gtr.ukri.org. So that's their research innovation website. And then you have to look at Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You have to search for that one, and then you'll see all their funds over there. Oh, you didn't hear about this. No, they won't tell you. Here's another one they didn't tell you. This is, uh, didn't you know, some people think about MBS. Don't forget MBS, Mohammed bin Salman. Remember that guy? Some people wonder if he might be the Antichrist in the future because he was 33 years of age and he was crown prince. But you know what that guy did? ABC News, title of the article, Saudi Arabia puts 81 to death in its largest mass execution. You know what MBS did? He beheaded all in what, 81? They never had something like this before. People would go in an outrage, but your attention is, why? So that because, oh no, no, I've done this for a while. You guys just weren't paying attention. We've done this for a while, so it's normal if we put out this kind of execution in the future. It's normal for what? It's normal for Fauci fungus. It's normal for all this uh, uh, go more government control. It's more normal for, believe it or not, now this one is probably the most uh, disturbing thing I ever saw before. Have you ever heard of a guy named Yuval Harari? I would, okay, this guy, he was a Jew who became atheist. Hmm. And then he is the top advisor to Klaus Schwab's World Economic Forum. All right. Now, this guy, you know what he, if you, uh, this, uh, I'm going to play you a video, all right? This guy researched, and he's the top talk in a lot of interviews about our future. Don't forget the Great Reset. Don't forget the next industrial, uh, the next revolution of technology mingling with mankind. You know what he said? All right. 
He even had an interview with uh, Facebook Meta, by the way. And then he mentioned this. He mentioned about that people who have the independent free will to vote may not be a good idea. To Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, who's in charge of Meta, which some people are wondering, will Meta have some play with technology for the Antichrist system, Mark of the Beast, right? But this is what this guy said. Uh, I'm going to play you the video, all right? Very soon people will walk around with biometric sensors on or even inside their bodies and will allow uh, Google or Facebook or the Chinese government or whoever to constantly monitor what's happening inside my body. The whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. We have the technology to hack human beings on a massive yeah. scale. New surveillance technologies that are now deployed just to deal with this coronavirus uh, outbreak, when it's over, some governments may say, yes, but there is a second wave of corona coming, so we have to be prepared. And there is Ebola, and there is also regular flu. Why not protect people against that too with this new surveillance system? So the tendency would be to prolong it uh, indefinitely. Also, it's the moment when surveillance goes really under the skin Governments are now not, not just interested in where we go and who we meet, but even in what's happening inside our bodies. All right. Yeah. Look up that guy. Top advisor for Klaus Schwab World Economic Forum. And he said, we already had this technology going around. And he said, Google, Facebook, China government could use it, whatever. And he mentioned about ever since the pandemic thing, we got already have the technology where you can do surveillance under the skin. All right, look up that guy. I'm telling you, he's a big talk. He's a world famous expert that World Economic Forum turns to, and he was spurting all that. And he mentioned about free will is not even an issue anymore. Now people can what? Why? Because there's so much danger, so we need big gov yeah. to protect us with the technology and then dictate the minds of humans. Of course, you thought that this was something laughable back then and it's just a crazy theory, right? or a story that was going around? No, this is from the, the, one of the leading experts, top advisor to Klaus Schwab. I'd like to close it with this. I went a long time because I told you there was a lot, but let me close it off with this one and then uh, we'll call it a night. But Yuval Noah Harari, just look him up, look up all his interviews, it will shock you. And what shocks you even more is how these people are no trying to normally accept it. You can tell they were disturbed, but they, had, they were accepting it. We just need that uh, new world order, uh, one world currency, right? Mark of the beast, you cannot buy or sell. Well, with Russia-Ukraine conflict, is that where we're getting toward? Well, from The Wire, the title of the article from The Wire, Possible End to Dollar Dominance? Permanent alterations to the world order post-Ukraine. What's going on? Because of China, the yuan that's coming out. Here's from Barron's title of their article, how China's currency could come out as a big winner in the Russia-Ukraine war. So what happened? Biden had to take hold and to control. So when he took hold and control, title of the article from Fortune, what are CBDCs? Biden's executive order on crypto may lead to a U.S. digital currency. And they mentioned this is one of the first executive orders that happened. See, there, what's going on? One world control, yeah. currency, etc. And this is surprising for some of you who didn't know about this. This is uh, from... Uh, iPhonesoft.fr, I think this is in Ukrainian language or it's some other language, I'm not sure. But if you look at iPhonesoft, the title of their article reads, and I'm going to read a translated form. All right, uh, anyway, I think if you look it up then, it'll be easier. Have you ever heard of a social, uh, social app called DIA? D-I-I-A. Ukraine finally got it out. 
where you can take uh, this passport with uh, universal income and identity all together in one app. Look that up, okay? D I I A D I. Just look that up, that app, okay? And then I'm sure you'll find it. And then look at the description of what Dia does, and then it will turn your blood a little cold. And isn't it interesting? The Rothschilds, uh, one of the globalist people, uh, they are one of the owners of the famous magazine, The Economist. All right, you know what The Economist magazine predicted in 1988? Title of the article uh, from The Economist from 1988 Get ready for a world currency. And you know what they said? Near the year 2020, near that year, we're gonna, the dollar and the other digital uh, currency systems will be away, and we're gonna replace it with what they call the Phoenix. Now, if you know about the occultist and globalist agenda, their favorite bird, one of their favorite birds is the Phoenix. Chaos and destruction, you rise out of the ashes to create a new world order, a new kingdom. It says, uh, 30 years from now, Americans, Japanese, Europeans, and people in many other countries will probably be paying for their shopping with the same currency. Is, are, is this it? <laughs> is this it? Wow. Well, I, we are definitely seeing what? They're walking to and fro, guys. They're walking to and fro. It's only a matter of time that seal is about to. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's teaching. Father God, I pray that tonight's teachings have uh, made us aware that your book is true and that your book is real and that there are spirits out there, the spirits of those horsemen, the spirits of demonic beings, and even you at work when bringing the clock even closer to the end. And the rapture is coming even closer. I pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, things like this will get us stirred up, get us excited, get us more actively involved in your ministry and your work because we have not much time less, left. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.